CNC Music Factory was an American group in 1989 by David Cole and Robert Civiles. The group is best known for their five hit singles, Gonna Make You Sweat, Everybody Dance Now, Here We Go, Let's Rock and Roll, Things That Make You Go Hmm, Just a Touch of Love and Keep It Coming. The group stopped recording in 1996 following the death of Cole, but in 2010, the band reformed with Eric Cupper replacing Cole. However, in 2003, original member Freedom Williams acquired trademark rights to the name and still tours under that moniker. So what happened to the CNC Music Factory? Why did it stop recording? Well, those questions are what we intend to answer. The group was formed by David Cole and Robert Civiles, but wasn't originally called CNC Music Factory. The two became friends when they both performed at Better Days Club. Civiles as DJ and Cole as keyboardist in the late 1980s. In 1987, Civiles and Cole formed a short-lived house music group called Two Puerto Ricans, A Black Man, and a Dominican. The group also included David Morales, who, like Civiles, was a resident DJ at Better Days, and Chep Nunez. Following the breakup of their previous group, Civiles and Cole continued to record music together under the name The 28th Street Crew. Then in mid-1989, the duo released an album titled I Need a Rhythm. In September 1989, Civiles and Cole created a female group called Seduction. They released their debut album, Nothing Matters Without Love, which was entirely produced by Civiles and Cole. Also in 1989, Civiles and Cole formed a new group known as CNC Music Factory. They decided to incorporate their surnames and that gave them the name. In 1990, The Crew, a group composed of Civiles, Cole, and Freedom Williams, released the single Get Dumb, Free Your Body. The song featured an unauthorized sample of Boyd Jarvis's 1983 song The Music Got Me. Jarvis filed a lawsuit against Cole and Civiles as well as A&M Records. The court ruled in favor of Jarvis. However, that would not be the only lawsuit that the CNC Music Factory would face in its emergence. In December 1990, CNC Music Factory released their debut album, Gonna Make You Sweat, which peaked at number two on Billboard's Top 200 Albums chart. But the peculiar thing about the single and the album was that the vocals didn't belong to them. Following the release of Gonna Make You Sweat, Everybody Dance Now in November 1990, CNC Music Factory was hit with a lawsuit by Martha Wash, whose vocals were uncredited on the chorus. The song used an edited compilation of vocal parts that Wash recorded in June 1990 for an unrelated demo tape. The demo tape was recorded by Martha for some of the songs that were used by the Seduction Girls. Wash had previously worked with David and Robert when they needed songs for the Seduction Girls album, but David and Robert didn't give Wash the credit she deserved for the song. After discovering that the group was using Zelma Davis in the music video, Wash attempted to negotiate with Civiles and Cole for sleeve credits and royalties, which eventually proved unsuccessful. In December 1991, the CNC Music Factory was faced with yet another lawsuit, because Martha Wash filed a lawsuit. The lawsuit was filed in the Los Angeles Superior Court against Robert Civiles and David Cole, charging the producers and their record company, Sony Music Entertainment, with fraud, deceptive packaging, and commercial appropriation. Before the lawsuit, Zelma, who lip-synced Martha's vocals, told everyone on the set that she wasn't the actual person singing, that she was only lip-syncing. When the record label heard this, they had to tell Zelma to stop talking about it to people. Zelma believed she wasn't doing anything bad because in a 2014 interview, she said that the record label, production company, and management told her it was okay to lip sync in the video as long as she could sing the song live. After the lawsuit, David and Robert claimed that they planned to make Martha Wash part of the CNC Music Factory, but they balked at the idea after the lawsuit. But then again, at various points, they said Martha didn't want to be part of the group. Nevertheless, the song went on to be a major pop music cliche. It was the soundtrack of so many television shows like The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, The Simpsons, Space Jam, and even The Office. Despite the lawsuit that the group had, they still experienced a lot of success that year. And at the end of the year, they had earned a total of four American Music Awards. 
CNC was loving their success so much that not only did they mention the unsettled lawsuit by Martha, but also downplayed the whole thing, making it seem like a minor issue. Then in 1994, the group experienced a change in lineup. Martha was surprisingly asked to join the group as a full-time vocalist, and Freedom left the group to become a solo artist and was replaced by a New York freestyle act, Trilogy. The August after the new edition, the group released their second album titled Anything Goes. The album featured vocals from Zelma, Martha, and Trilogy. The album earned the group their sixth number one dance head. But as not all good things last forever, on January 24, 1995, David Cole passed away from spinal meningitis at the age of 32. It was widely speculated that AIDS was the real reason for his death. In November 1995, CNC released their seventh album. The album was released by Robert and didn't feature any vocals from Zelma and Martha. The first single from the album, I Will Always Be Around, became their seventh number one dance head, although the second single didn't make any chart at all, and that led to the disbandment of the group. Backdating to the time of the Martha lawsuit, Zelma found herself being accused of not having any real talent and being in the group mainly because of her aesthetics. In the same time, Rolling Stone interview with Martha, Zelma spoke candidly about how hard it was to get past all the drama 20 years after. She said she criticized herself for being susceptible. She went further to say no record label was willing to touch her because she was branded as a fraud and a model, and that made her career to be blacklisted. She claimed she apologized to Martha years after the scandal. Zelma continued to release odd singles here and there while also dabbling into the acting industry. The year after David died, Robert released an album under the name Robbie Rob's Club World, which contained past singles and unreleased material recorded by CNC Music Factory. He also went on to release several albums as a member of a New York-based hip hop group, MVP, before taking an extended sabbatical. He then decided to reform CNC in 2010 with DJ, producer, and songwriter Eric Cupper, who replaced David. His collaboration with Eric Cupper produced a couple of singles that featured Scarlett Santana, but eventually they still faded away only for David to come back five years later with a couple of singles. David's latest single was released in 2021 and was named Yo Soy Latino Vamos a Balar, by Latinos del Mundo. We didn't forget about freedom, did we? He also released his self-titled solo album and was the only one to date in 1993, but it failed to garner him the type of success he'd had in CNC. He decided to try acting, but eventually went off the radar. Then in 2003, he made a bold move and decided to acquire the federal trademark to use the name CNC Music Factory for live performances, even though his name doesn't have a single C in it. Apparently, he was able to accomplish it because he'd been performing solo shows across the country under the group's name since the late 90s. Another law in Freedom's favor was the fact that neither David nor Robert trademarked the name. As of 2014, Williams has owned the trademark rights for the name for all affiliated efforts, not just live performances. Founding producer Civiles has labeled this the biggest insult in the world. So what do you think about the CNC Music Factory? Do you suppose it was right for Freedom to trademark the name? Let us know. Thank you for watching. Until next time on True Celebrity Stories.